Hey doing everyone, we're going to be going through a finals preview here, all those four games, and it's going to be by the numbers. Just want to go through the stats for the overall season to kick things off, and then going to be going through the individual matchups and, and how they go, obviously head-to-head, -head, and then going through their stats in a head-to-head -head basis, and, and sort, of, sort of basing it around, you know, where can the, the team, the opposite team there, try and have a bit of an advantage and what they might have to do a little bit differently to be able to get the wood over the other side there. So to kick things off here, Obviously, the scoring, the Panthers did have the most points there and, and the Knights the most tries. So this kind of make makes a lot of sense here, just given how the, the season played out. The Knights were a very, very strong attacking team, and we know how good the Panthers are week in, week out. But what really stands out here is the Panthers in the possession battle. So 54%, they actually beat every other team by three percentage points. Set completions were up at 83 as well, and a couple of points ahead of the Storm. Supports were there at 1,341. So they've got the Roosters by well over 100 in that one. You know, you've got players like Manu and Tedesco in there as support players here. So what this actually tells me through the supports and, and the line engage is that they are a very, very fit side and they work really, really hard on offense. And very, very rarely you see anyone slacking off in this side. And that's why, you know, a big reason why they're one of the better sides here. And it's definitely something that Warriors are going to have to try and match um, and really get up in the face of, of this uh, Penrith outfit to try and get the job done in this one. But it's actually crazy, the possession, the possession battle there with the Panthers. And, and obviously, a lot of that is to do with your set completion. So the more time, you, you know, the more sets that you complete, you're obviously not turning it over on the second or, or third tackle. And and uh, we'll see here with some, some of the kicking stats as well a little bit later is that they actually you know, take the most kicks in, in the game here. Um so line breaks there, Knights are up top, obviously there as well. You don't see the Panthers up there, which is which is interesting as well in that one. But what they do best is that post-contact meters. So that's the one they're obviously breaking the line and, and, and then being being able to get that quick play of the ball as well, which is really, really important, which we'll touch on in their matchup with the Warriors there. You see the Knights there, and obviously they're very much an attacking juggernaut. They're tied with the Panthers and clearly ahead of the next best in Broncos. And then it really falls off a cliff to Sharks and Titans. So very explosive backline is what we see in that one there. Dragons with the most decoy runs, funny there. Uh, but yeah, the running. So Panthers, most run readers, most runs. Kick return meters, by far and away, the best there as well. So yeah, Warriors trying to get a little bit of a strategy in, in how they can reduce this, I think is going to be pretty important as well. Uh, dummy half runs, Cowboys with uh, with Rishi Robson. He does seem to get plenty of run meters there. Uh, on the passing side of things, it's this uh, sort of doesn't help us too much. The all receipts, though, is you obviously how many times uh, players are touching the ball. So 11,391. 11, Again, plenty of ball movement, plenty of time in possession helps them in that one. Defensively, Roosters made the most tackles, and it wasn't even close in this one. Showed that they were pretty average for the most of the year. Plenty of errors in their games there. Missed tackles, none of the top teams are in that. So that shows something uh, very damning in that one, for sure. Intercepts, the Storm had the most. That was fun. Kicking. So total kicks there was the Panthers at 546. And they didn't kick for the most meters there. Cowboys ended up doing that. So a lot of their kicking, because they're making 70 meters, a lot of their kicks are within the half of the other of the opposition side. So a lot of you know, kicks to try and get a force dropout um, is, is kind of their biggest one there, or little bombs around the around the line there. Conversions. Congrats to Jared Croker on that one. 88% for the year. Wow. Incredible. Uh, yeah. Short dropouts. The Storm had the most at 28. So you'll see that increase, I'd imagine, next year. That'll get into the 30s very, very quickly. Uh, negative plays. You're seeing the Roosters in there. Plenty errors and, and penalties conceded. They seem to be there very, very regularly. If you look at the other sides there, you know, Broncos and Sharks, two teams in the top eight that had plenty of errors in this season. Penalties. You've got the Storm that are up there. Uh, and then the Roosters that are in, and the Raiders that are in the um, the top eight there as well. You can see here as well, obviously the handling errors. Tigers are up there at 241. Broncos is still very high, as we said, with the, with the error count. And that's something I definitely think they need to look at uh, heading into this first matchup. And we'll start with them, the Broncos, up against the Storm there. So if you're looking at their head-to-head, -head, the last couple, the, the, the Storm have won the last two, uh, the two times they played this year. And their head-to-head -head battle is 40 to 13 to the storm so this provides you know plenty of fireworks in this one i think it's going to be a really really close matchup and you're looking obviously this year as, as the the broncos winning more for the season and probably been you know in much better form 
Then the Storm, they are playing at home. So these are a few things that they go their way. But obviously the Storm having the wood over Broncos a little bit is very, very helpful for them. And you're looking here at completion rates that are very, very similar. So if they can perform the same in that way, I think the game's going to be won in a different way. Tackle efficiency, very much the same as well. We're looking at average play the ball here, 3.55 and 3.59. Just keep an eye on that when we look at the other teams there. And are very, very similar to that. So we know that that's obviously a very, very important stat. If you can get the ball away quickly and, and spread it to the, the wings for these for these teams out, to the edges of two really strong uh, you know, teams with, with really strong outside backs and, and great playmakers. And this is where a lot of that game is going to be, be won here. You obviously look through the middle as well. And uh, you know, how much Nelson is, is going to be of, of importance in this one when you're looking at coming up against Payne Haas and, and Carrigan. You know, guys like Palacia and Flegler have been really, really good for the Broncos as well. So you know, can Storm hold it together through the middle and not give up too many post-contact meters? So the guys like Walshy um, you know, aren't able to do their thing and uh, you know, get the ball out to Katoni and, and Cobo and, and Farnworth there on the outsides. Uh, that's all the winning percentage at this venue is actually crazy how, how much the Storm love Suncorp in that one so yeah there are a lot of the, the key stats that you want to be looking at in this matchup I do think that the Broncos will just get away with this one just the form across the entire year <coughs> sorry the consistency that the, the Broncos have shown throughout the entirety of the season I think is going to pay dividends here in this matchup it's really it's it's something there that is worrying for, for a team like the Storm. And they just haven't been able to put two, three weeks together in a row. And when you are coming up against a really, really strong side, I think the Broncos have more of a chance of going all the way than the Storm just for that consistency reason. But we know it's a Craig Bell Bellamy coach side. They can definitely turn on some consistency. So I'm, I am tipping the Broncos just to, to win this one. They'll have their opportunities. They have a couple of strike weapons. It's just going to be how do they defend... Cam Munster, can they keep him out of it? You know, Hughes coming back from injury, is he going to be the same player that he was in the last month? Or is he going to have a few issues himself? So I'm going to tip that this game will end up at 22 to 18. Let me know what you guys will think. I think the Broncos will just get up in this one, but I would not be surprised if there was an upset. We know how good the Storm are in finals appearances, and that's something that the Broncos do not have a lot of, especially these young players here. They've got Reynolds, and that's going to be their key, I think. We move to the Panthers and the Warriors. And at the moment, if you're looking just on form, then, then the Panthers should be winning this. They got back into form in that last game of the round. And the Warriors have been struggling to find that form <laughs> over the last month there, which is very, very frustrating for them, obviously. And that's something that they, you know, I think their way of going about it was let's just get all these players a rest, get them fresh, and hopefully they're ready to go for this matchup with the Panthers there. And you're looking at head-to-head, -head, and obviously Panthers have won a lot more since 1998 there. And makes sense. Yeah, they've been in a, you know, a lot more. Um, yeah, they've been in the top eight a lot more than what the Warriors have across that time. And you see Panthers have beat them the last few times there as well. So, yeah, not super exciting news for the Warriors fans. If you're looking at, yeah, their win percentage this year, it hasn't changed too much. And completion rate, we know the Panthers are the best, but Warriors have been very, very good across this season. And that's been a big reason why... They have been super efficient and able to win those closer games too, just by getting things right with handling the footy. Tackle efficiency is really up for the Warriors, and they need to keep this up because the second phase play, the yeah, you know, the post contact meters, these types of things are really, really important for the Panthers. And if Warriors can slow them down a little bit on that front, then I think their defense will be able to hold up a little bit there. Average play of the ball speed, you do see it down. So what we said with the last one, 3.55, 3.59. Warriors have a good one at 3.54, better than those two teams before. Uh, but the Panthers have the quickest play the ball speed there at 3.41. And this is how they're able to get it out to their edges, as I said there before. So very, very important stats there for the, the Panthers in this one. And yeah, I think it'll just be one through the middle there. If they can get those post-contact meters, get the Warriors retreating there, I think the Panthers are going to be able to get the job done on that front. Warriors are looking a little bit clunky. On, on offense at the moment and you know if they bring that to this matchup I don't, I don't see them scoring many points lucky to be maybe one to two tries but if they come out with a you know a bit of freshness about them and obviously everyone back except for tomorrow uh, except for Luke Metcalf with Tamati Martin coming back I see them you know, obviously playing slightly different with Tamati there but 
overall, I don't think it changes too much as he was there for that first portion of the season when they were playing really, really well. I am worried for the Warriors in this one, and I am going to tip the Panthers to put probably 26 on them at this point. So it could be 26-6, could be 26-10 is where my general thoughts are at the moment, just based on, on the current form of the Warriors. I do hope that they come out and, and play a lot better, and, and this you know game is closer because if they were playing like they were about sort of six, six to eight weeks ago, then I really think that they can put up a good fight and it can be a really close game. But um, Panthers at home are a very, very different beast. So that's my thoughts on that game at the moment. I hope that it's not a blowout. Sharkies and the Roosters. This is the one that's very, very difficult to predict here because the Roosters are coming in a little bit hotter than what the Sharks are at this point with two S's apparently. $1.94 to $1.90 there. Roosters, strangely enough, getting favoritism away from home. So... What you do look at here is obviously a lot more players in that Roosters team have finals experience. And that's going to be the big thing that they've got under their belt coming into this game. And that they're showing a little bit of form with some wins on the board. Sharkies displayed you know, back-to-back losses in last year's finals, which is, is something they are going to want to avenge. And I think they're playing, I don't think they're playing anywhere near as well this year, right now, as they were at this time last year. And that's something to note as well. So I do see it as a very, very even contest. Can the Sharks uh, you know, fan base at home get them across the line here? Let's have a look at the stats. So 27 to 17, the Roosters over the Sharkies there as well is something to note. And the Sharkies getting up in their April matchup, Roosters getting up in that May matchup there. So the two recent ones, not too much to go off on that. Both have a very poor winning percentage for the season with the Sharkies having the better offense there. So that's something to note. Yeah, the Roosters are improved in that in that scenario, and they do have a lot of errors and, and a lot of penalties there as well. So can the Sharks capitalize on that? They do have the, the team to be able to put a lot of points on. So I do see this do see this being a little bit more of a higher scoring matchup, somewhere in, in the 20s for both teams. And at this stage, I am slightly leaning towards the Roosters potentially winning this one. But I will be going with the Sharkies. I think, yeah, this will be very, very close, similar to that of the the Broncos and the Storm matchup. And I will be going, will be siding with the home team in this one. The Sharkies, twenty six to twenty four, a nice close one there. Completion rates are very much the same. Tackle efficiently, efficiency the same as well, basically, and along with the average play, the ball speed. So, it's really going to come down to can Sammy Walker come in and dominate straight away after he's you know. Long long absence, he came in and played a couple of good games to finish, but this is a tougher opponent here in the Sharkies. Can they come out and can he come out and, and display that along with you know their strike weapons in Manu uh, and obviously Tedesco as well. Missing Hargraves is going to be really, really tough for them. Can Nico Hines stand up? He had a, a bit of a tough trot of things in the origin period, obviously. This is his time to shine, and I think that he's been able to put in the work to be able to sneak them over the line here. Not sure how far both of these teams are going to go, but it's going to be a very, very close matchup in this one. Sharkies just over the Roosters. And I do think that this final one here, Knights and the Raiders, is going to be a bit of a whitewash here. Uh, I think the Knights are just playing way too good at the moment. They were able to rest the majority of their stars. You just hope that Ponga comes back and his shoulder is is, is fine enough to be able to do what he does. So hopefully he doesn't get another knock on it. And that uh, sort of takes him out of this game. Uh, But if he's able to play well um, and and get his boys in in good position, I think the Knights are going to be way too good. They're going to have way too many points for the Raiders. I can't see the Raiders scoring more than two tries in this one. Knights defense, uh, their their work ethic has been really, really high, especially over the last sort of, well, that last couple of months since they've had their winning streak. So I expect the Knights to put 30-odd on the Raiders and and the Raiders not to (coughs) score. Sorry, not to score any more than two tries in this one as well. So I'm thinking 32 to 10 makes a lot of sense in this one. Head-to-head, very, very similar. Obviously, Knights have had a lot of lean years compared to the Raiders there. They've beat them both times this year. Looking at completion rate of 76% each, um, and that's going to be fine. I think if they if, if that's the same in this game, the Knights will, will blow them away. Points scored, way more there, and obviously plenty more conceded for the Raiders as well. So they leak a lot. Um, and they aren't able to score plenty themselves. You know, Knights have a really, really solid four and against there. You know, 439 points conceded means their defense is really, really solid. So that's that there. Tackle efficiency, very, very similar there, and play the ball speed a little bit on the Knights side, which allows, is going to allow them to get out to the edges very, very easily. And I clearly think that they've got close to the best back line in the competition right now. Fit, firing, tackle busting, 
um, try scoring back line and, and their middle forwards with Adam Elliott back is, is much improved. And then you've got Hastings to come back and steer them around the park. And uh, yeah, Gamble's been really solid as well um, with Crossland doing his thing in the middle. So very exciting for the Knights. They're going to have a, a cracking stadium filled up on Sunday and I wish them all the best of luck. So they're my tips and preview heading into round uh, into finals week one. Let me know if you enjoyed the, the sort of stats dive here. The, the head-to-head uh, is really, really cool, I think. And uh, yeah, it can show you a little bit of an insight as to how these how these matchups are going to play out in this one. Hope you enjoy those games. Can't wait for it. And we'll see you in the review next week.